I'm talking plural. They need you to keep saying, I, we, and our, to convert to death. It's called an agreement. All right, so now, this is why you must know the truth about your nationality and birthright, because you've got to stop claiming to be Rome's property, not to suffer Rome's debt. That's their debt, not yours. That's what must get, you got to get this through your head. Because you've been groomed to accept this debt that never belonged to you. This is the origin of the phrase that you keep hearing, the national debt. Yep. Since 1861, they've been putting their private corporate debt on the nationals of the land. Mm -hmm. Not the U.S. citizens, the nationals. Who are the nationals? The Moorish Americans who have been designated African Americans. That's been back in U.S. government debt since 1861. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand that premise. Knowing that, stop saying my anything in relationship to them. That's not a rejection of them, it's not a hatred of them, it's putting things properly. When you say my, you've accepted the debt. Are we clear? So get that straight and clean your language up. Now keep this in mind too, and this is fact. When you're wearing that fez, you've told the world that you know. So you can't wear that crown and then go back to things that delude to slavery. This is where he's talking about names and principles that delude the slavery. He's telling you stop doing that. You keep giving up your birthright, and then you want to march and complain. Don't complain. So once you have the truth, you're responsible. And then if you continue that language, you're selling out the next generation. That's what's happened to us. And we need to know that, and we need to take responsibility. So be careful what you say, because in law, what you say is what you mean. Well, you know what I really mean. No. You said part. You didn't say part. That's what you meant. In law, is what you meant. And everybody's doing like this and getting away. Well, they're rejecting me. You're not wearing perfume. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You're not welcome. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, keep correct. that in mind. So remember, when we make those corrections, we're not picking. We have to correct each other because every time you speak wrong, you're giving him mandate. And they will seize upon it, too. And they have been seizing upon it. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Thank you, Stanley. Correct it. Um, trying to correct the language. Is that why that their stock market started dropping? On that same date, was it the T-bond Two reasons. Also? Two reasons. Understanding. It was artificially propped up anyway. Mm -hmm. So, don't get it twisted. Now, and also don't get this twisted. Um, Trump and Clinton both belonged to the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter which right. one. So don't get that twisted. Don't get that twisted. And while these people are feeling good about themselves with their cotton candy and stuff, the vote didn't count and it never did. But it keeps them busy and believers. It's important to keep the believers believing. See, because the blind faith is also what supports the fiat. They got counterfeit religion, counterfeit as money, and counterfeit law. It's called color law. The job of the politicians and the black leader guys is to keep that paradigm going. Do you understand? And then making the people think there's separation of church and state. The state belongs to the church. They're all members of the Roman Curia. Are we clear? They're all members of the Roman Curia. Are we, are we clear? Now. When you know these things, you're not supposed to promote the fraud to the next generation. You're supposed to clean them up. You're supposed to baptize them. They're supposed to be born with a new mind. And you're supposed to protect that. Your failure to protect that is criminal. It's not just a mistake. It's criminal. 
This is why the Europeans, a lot of times when they get frustrated with our people marching and praying and making themselves a nuisance, will stop and say, all right, we're tired of your BS. Why don't you all leave us the hell alone and go back to your black leaders that keep stopping your back in slavery? Oh, he's racist. And then we start that stuff. And they tell the absolute truth. Mm. Do you understand? After all, these people keep saying they know God, Jesus, Allah, Moses, Muhammad. Certainly they should know law that's right in front of them on this earth. If they want to tell you what's on the dark side of the moon. And God made everything. Yeah. And all things are possible. <laughs> he makes peanut butter sandwiches for everybody. <laughs> you that cool, make your own peanut butter sandwich. You know what I mean? Really, it's, I mean, it's like that. And that's how the world is looking at you. They, they're saying, if you know all this stuff, then you certainly should know the operations on this planet. And, and it's back to, you know, the principle when they say, how dare you claim the love of God you do not see and love not your brothers and sisters whom you see every day. Same principle applies. How dare you claim to know divine law and you don't even know civil law that governs your lives every day. You're full of doo-doo and people need to tell you to your face you're full of it. But we're, you know, we got this self-righteousness about it and we keep sacrificing the generations and then accusing the devil. We're part of the problem. So, that fake debt is the so-called national debt. That's where that phrase has its origin that they've been throwing around. So when they're talking about the national debt, they're talking about the debt put on the Moors under the designation of African Americans for that corporation that Lincoln bankrupted in 1860, which was registered in France, which is called the United States Service Corporation. Are we clear? So that's the shadow government that been ruling you ever since 1861, and you've been trained like rats to think it's a country. But they needed you to say that it's the country. They needed you to say, I'm a US citizen. And when you did, you gave up your birthright, sanctioned the debt. That's what's been happening to you. The devil didn't do it. You did it. Do you understand? So now that you know this history, you are no longer excused. Now you know what people in your highest degrees of the secret societies know. Without sign, symbol, allegorical story, now you're aware of the imperial divan of which you're an heir. So stop faking it. Are we clear? Now all the little things in between that you need to get familiar with and, and know, this is where your study begins. Are we clear? Yeah. When we make available to you some preformed documents, it is because we know it's going to take you years to gather this information, and it's just to help you cross the bridge a little bit while Rome is raping you. So you're um, advised to study them carefully because the issue is competence and incompetence. If you demonstrate incompetence whatsoever, they will put a barrister on you from England who's really a deputy knight for the Pope of Rome under the Unum Sanctum policy, whose mission is to undermine the Republic and thus the treaty. They're not there to protect your rights, they're there to steal your rights. Now you understand the Zodiac Constitution, when you hire a lawyer, you give them your right? Yes. Yes. If you understand the history, you understand that. Now, so if you don't know your rights, you're put in a compromised position. I got kept me a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is a good idea. Yeah, because he knows the sandwiches. <laughs> um, I don't think you should be messing with him. Yeah, he knows the law and stuff. Yeah. Law is a constitution and treaty. What point do you all don't understand? It's got seven articles. That's the supreme law of the land. Third grade grammar. Third grade civics. Third grade. So what do you have when you have adults that won't enforce the contract? You let them loose. And now they're screwing you. That's what's been happening. Are we clear? So get yourself in order. All right? All right, so now we all know that. So that's what the Clearfield Doctrine is all about. So the Clearfield Company is telling them, 
We ain't going for the nigger codes. You ain't pulling that on us. On principle, that $20, $24, 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> $24, $24, $20 check. We ain't taking the hit. That's for the niggas. The monkeys. Do you think monkey means human rights and civil rights? And they agreed to be Negroes. 14th Amendment person. Corporations. Do you understand? Corps. So if you agree to monkey, are you included in human rights? Nope. If you agree with monkey? Nope. So do human rights apply to monkeys? Not that people don't like monkeys, they're pretty cool. <laughs> they swing around and stuff. But, uh, but so you have adults that keep calling each other niggas and think it means identity. Do you think the civilized world will sit around and debate with these people when it generates finance for them? So if we agree to be niggers and are outside the human family because we refuse to honor our mothers and fathers, can heritable law apply to such persons? So in law, such persons are designated in law as, quote unquote, colored people. Colored people means a simulacrum distinguished from that which is real. A prima facie, giving an appearance of an apparent right, but actually a deceptive appearance, hiding a lack of reality. That's what that word means. And so they have paid off black leaders to tell you that it means Afrocentricity of Hotep of Egypt. <laughs> Dealing with the carbon of the universe. And these people believe them. Do you understand? So, again, that's not knocking anyone. It's, it's giving you basic, basic education that you should know as a child. Right. And if you don't exercise those rights in law, you don't have them. Because the rule in civilization is this. Man, comma, know thyself. Man, comma, be thyself. Man, comma, honor your mothers and your fathers that your days may be longer upon the earth, land, Earth, land, L-A-N-D, not cloud. I know Reverend will tell people it's a cloud. Yeah. Earth, land, that the Lord thy God Allah has given thee. Honor not your mothers and fathers. Transact business in another man's name, and you are his slave. Mm -hmm. Now, so grow up, get over ourselves. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Turn our hearts back to our mothers and fathers. Claim one lost the state. It's called reversion of the state. That's why reversion is placed before this so that you can analyze it and put it together to use your reasoning mind and understand that the rest of the world already knew this stuff. So when you be thinking that nobody knows this stuff or nobody understands what no Drali did and it's a belief, you can go ahead and think that way however you're sorely mistaken. And this is again why you see a lot of COINTELPRO operators will tell people that Drali didn't teach civics. Mm -hmm. When yep. the enforcement of constitutional law is absolute highest yeah. level of civics. Uh -huh. And even the art of Act 1 of the divine constitutional bylaws, he says what? Grand Chiefs, the moderator, the chairman, they're putting the power to make law and enforce law. law. And they turn around to the and teach that law stuff. <laughs> and people believe them. So, again, you know, do what you will, but you can't say you weren't told. And understand the magistrates are masons anyway, so they already know this stuff. They got the feds that belong to you. And even the courtrooms are set up like what? Chambers in Egypt. With the magistrate acting like a magi sitting in the east. And then they triangulate, have you on the lower side of the triangle as a defendant. Playing you in your own stuff, in your own land. And then we sitting around talking about, I know the Lordness. I got a personal relationship. Matter of fact, That's I got a cell number. <laughs> <laughs> he got an iPhone. <laughs> they lying. <laughs> they too. Give me five dollars. Oh, make it ten if I get Jesus in there. <laughs> don't believe them. As soon as they start that, I ain't gonna say don't be violent, so don't punch them in the nose, but the deal is turn and turn turn your back. Because they're playing it. And understand, and this is for everybody, and I know it, it, it upsets a lot of people, Jesus really does not have a bank account that Chase Manhattan. Mm -hmm. 
They let me establish the fact. <laughs> All right? So, the truth of um, the matter is, so when our people be calling these people officers, they just assign them. <coughs> this is why you don't call them officers. Do you understand? Why? Those corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. So if you want to assign them, and then they use that power that you just gave them, should you be trying to lose? No. Hmm? No. Right? There you go. All right. Um, now, so we're going to uh, um, deal with this um, first paragraph and talk about this. So the truth and provable facts about the law, principle, and nature of the Clearfield Doctrine must be known and recognized by all true Aboriginal American Al-Iraqi nationals, being the natural peoples and true heirs of the land, America. And what the Clearfield Doctrine is saying and establishing in the Stare Decisis, so Stare Decisis is a designation that's given to any affirmative law case that makes it to the Supreme Court. Once it goes to the Supreme Court, it's called Stare Decisis, also res judicata. That means all operatives in all of the corporate states are obligated to this. There is no option for them to make decisions contrary to this, or even dispute it. Now, logically, if you didn't know that, you'd let them get away with telling you, but we don't know about that because in the state of California, they don't have rye bread. And you don't let them get away with that kind of stuff. Do you understand? Because you already know better. That's why you're giving this knowledge. Are we clear? That's what stare decisis is. So if you don't know this, you allow them to be at you. You get the point? What was you going to say? Now, when you was quoting the uh, officer, when you call them officers, oh, right, when you call them officers, you just assign them, unbeknownst to you. So that's why you give this information so you stop calling them what they're not. Well, here's the mic. Uh, oh, so you don't call them officers. You call them. Well, what's right. your name? Freddie Jones? Oh, Mr. <laughs> Freddie Jones. Because <laughs> what is an officer? What is an officer? Do you know the definition? It's a constitutional assigned person. Because they're holding office. But since you're an heir, see, trusts are given in written form and oral. So you call an officer, oh, got that? And they start doing a moonwalk. Why are you doing a moonwalk? You just call them officer. Then he start using that power. They racist. No, he's an officer because you just outside him. Now you're getting abused because he really is your enemy. You're under occupation. You're under European colonial occupation. They're colonists. They're not Americans. So if you call them American, you just assign them. Just gave them your birthright. If you call a white man, it means sovereign of the land. Then he exercises, now you want to march and pray. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. So if you go around selling pit bulls as elephants and somebody go for it, you mess on it. However, you just committed a fraud. So if you keep calling these people that's faking as government officers and my congressman and my senator, that type of stuff, you just assign them. That's what empowers them. So you're given this consciousness so you can stop calling these imposters something that they're not, including you stop calling yourself something and someone that you're not. Because both of those terms delude to slavery that was set forth with the Act of Congress, February 2nd, 1871. Are we clear? Clear. That's the shadow government. So the truth and provable facts about the law, principle, and nature of the Clearfield Doctrine must be known and recognized. Known and recognized, you see, by all true Aboriginal American al Iraqi nationals being the natural peoples and true heirs of the land, America, and what the Clearfield Doctrine is saying and establishing in establishing the Stereocyte Law is that when private commercial paper is used by corporate government, specifically referencing the governing officers and offices of and for the United States of America, the United States, the U.S., then that said government loses and or lost its sovereignty status and becomes, became no different than any other mere private corporation. In addition, 
to other documented sources available for historical references also review the 10 year period in North America, North American occupational history, wherein a review of the times spanning from May the 10th of 1861, involving the activities leading up to the Congress for German Cenodia, and up to, so see the, see the um, editorials net that are necessary, and up to the Act of Congress, February 2nd, 1871, within that 10 year span of time, Note these other relevant acts and events. The Constitution, pardon me, the construction and issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation as it is represented and issued after Congress's multiple modifications. The creation and activation of the Bureau of Refugees, Freedmen, and Abandoned Lands, known by the misnomer of the Freedmen's Bureau, established 1865. The same was deliberately mismanaged and its underfunding and mission having been deliberately squandered by its administrators, causing the Bureau to be extinguished and closed 1868. The creation of the fictional uh, peonage, that's what the peonage operations, all right? So the creation of the fictional peonage operations of the corporate person, Man of Straw, established via the spurious 14th Amendment, 1868, and contrived by the personating and de facto governing pseudo-Congress body politic members. So you must know that those persons are really secretly uh, members of the Board of Trustees for the United States Corporation Company, pretending to be congressmen and senators, mm -hmm. an office that they really don't possess. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> As such, and in its degraded and defaulted status, the United States Cor Corporation, see, entity, see, so now what you thought was the United States country is really the United States Corporation, you see. Entity being a now private for profit entity as opposed to public. This is important. You must know the distinction between private and public. Became the de facto and now corrupted and debased entity styled as the U.S. democracy. And this unconstitutional entity must at all times be distinguished from the constitutional republic. Although the same associated pseudo Congress body of men were operating de facto as government. So you must be cognizant, you must be conscious of this in all your activities. Are we clear? Amen. Including when you get mail from the IRS, which is really the Inquisition Revenue Service, which is the gangster arm for them for robbing people under the de facto conversion of their private debt on your backs. So you don't owe them anything and never did. Are we clear? Amen. So whenever they're writing you or claiming you owe anything, they're extorting and robbing you. <clears throat> and so they had actually and unlawfully abandoned their constitutional offices, thereby the once deemed as the uh, the once deemed as legitimate. So we move the. So once, the once deemed as legitimate United States government, and that would be small u in that case. Via its constitutional officers had failed in its, its their designated and limited delegated powers and trust purposes of existence. In other words, they're in breach of trust. They're imposters. And so if you um, start talking racism and prejudice, your conversation is incorrect. It was given to you to divert you from this information. Do you understand? So as soon as someone in so-called leadership positions start running around talking about colors and racism and their prejudice, understand that's a diversion argument because it's not what's going on. This is what's going on. And this is what they don't want you to know. As long as you don't exercise this knowledge, you are declared incompetent. 
and therefore they will they will represent you because you clearly can't present yourself. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So when you're learning or learning the truth about your nationality and birthright, understand this is where your birthright was taken. 1861. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. All right. And so you got an imposter government and imposter people imposturing and been robbing you and been charging you with your own robbery and saying that you owe the debt of all that they robbed you since 1861. And they robbed all your stuff and then charging you with the benefit of the robbery. So whenever they say you're U.S. citizens, that's what they're actually saying. And when you agree to be a U.S. citizen, that's what you're saying. You've just accepted the debt. Mm -hmm. Dr. Naila. Islam. Um, first of all, I want to say, um, I want to say Islam too. It's been upwards of about 80 some people who are watching all around the country who right. are watching this live so they can see you. Read them, y'all. Yeah. Okay, it's about 71 watching. I also reawakening minds. Yes, yes. Um, but my question is, um, just to back up, you know, in, in because I, I see some of the people that are coming up on here, and I know some of these people don't know anything about their nationality and so forth. Some of these people I know maybe are from, they used to be members of this ministry and, and so forth. So my question is, and if you could just reiterate, you mentioned it when you talked about the fact that, you know, when we think in terms of our nationality, where we come from, you know, of course, we're looking out where we always think it Which is called disassociation. Right. We thought we were brought over here on slave ships and a lot You of are the aboriginal people of the land. Right. I, I, I was asking if you would just, you know, elaborate on that a little bit more. Yes. Let's do this. Come in front of here so you can show them uh, Executive Order 11490, King Alfred. And this is a military document. This is for all people in power. This is all your congressmen people who claim to be congressmen, city council people, your big time ministers, you know, like the Martins and the Jesse Jacksons and the Abernathy's and the Reverend Graves, all Masons. Um, I don't know if they can read it, but it's... it's well, yeah, well, you'll be able to get to it. Um, let's, uh, let's back up and let's, let's go... Um, uh, hold on for a second. Put the camera on you. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hold five things. Um, I just think it's important, you know, for, for folks to get an eye, you know, get an understanding. Yes, and, and, on, and an understanding and overstanding. Of yeah, who and they keep are. in mind that um, that they just simply lack information. <laughs> And this is one of the reasons why we're giving the people documents so they can understand that it has nothing to do with what they believe or what they don't believe or what so-called religion they claim. This is the real history and this is really what's wrong with you. And this is what's really happening to you. And the reason that people who know this information won't talk is because they're getting paid off to keep this information from the masses. You know, and of course, not having reference to people don't suspect that they're being screwed because they don't know they're being screwed. You know how you say, if you didn't know that the cookie factory belonged to you, you didn't know that you should have a cookie. You know, you're arguing about cookies and, you, and, and you're supposed to inherit the field of wheat that the cookies came from. Now, this is um, Executive Order 11490. King Alfred military document. Now this is um can you see that? Can can you show can let me try to bring this up a little bit more? Provided for by Executive Order 11490, October the 19th, 1969. Now notice that date, you all, and understand how you hear some of the politicians sitting around talking about now, about the Third World War, and whether they talk about China or Russia, and trying to stop the thing about that war, and they're talking all that stuff. Well, the Third World War started 25 years before this already. Mm -hmm. 
It's called silent war that's been against you. The heirs of this estate. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So, this executive order was authorized October of 1969 to counteract the minority, blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites in their rise from up under the depression and powers that be, the government. They keep calling it the government, but you understand it's that shell corporation that's actually been misrepresented as government to you. And this is the source of your real economic and social and political problems that you have been thinking was that you just didn't have a job. Do you understand? And this is really the source. In the event of widespread and continuing and coordinated racial disturbances in the United States, King Alfred, at the, at the discretion of the president, is to be put into action Amen. immediately. Amen. But let me go to the security page, and um, he backed this up some. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the section that, I, that uh, we want Dr. Naila to show the listeners um, who are not, maybe not aware of, they might have heard of this military operation and never seen any documentation. Now you're going to see some of the documentation. Mm. And then you can see why the so-called black leaders stay away from this information because they're paid to. Because understand they can't, they can't be overseers and then tell the people the real history. That doesn't exactly go together. Get the point? Let's go here. Now these are infiltrated so-called black organizations that you'll see right here. Solid Weapons, Executive Order 11490. I'm going to read security page later, but I'm going to first show these people their connection and what all politicians already know about them, including all of their so-called scholarly, quote-unquote, black leader guys. <clears throat> and all their big-time reverends with the big churches all over the place, who are 33-degree Masons, whether admitted or not. These infiltrated organizations under surveillance. I won't even go through them. Let's go through these doc, these issues right here that you can read and understand what everybody knows about you, including all your so-called people you think you're voting for, thinking that's representing you who are really not. Note, at the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leader, Leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. Working with local public officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled list of minority leaders have been readied at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal. And we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal King Alfred in all its aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. This move is not without precedent in American history, Attorney General. Now pay attention to this paragraph, preliminary memo from the Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy. Read this together, you all. For he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that political asylum will not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of minority is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the west coast. Middle of the paragraph again. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. See what all scholars know? Your heritage is here on this continent, not country, this continent. You were brought from nowhere. You're the people of the land. Great Masonic secret. Do you understand? So while our people are sitting around talking about who's the president and their council people and 
Yeah, reverence. So all these people have this knowledge and ain't been telling you. And having you think that somebody brought you here on a sardine ship, stacked up like sardines, for three and a half months on the border. Now you understand why they just build jails or they kill our people right on the street? Because they can't deport them. Because they're home. Now for those of you who knew history or know anything about Il Malik, Malcolm X, now you understand where that French Muslim was schooling Malcolm and said, don't come here with that black and white stuff, that slave language. To you all, you're told that Maghrib is Wednesday Salah. Maghrib is Morocco, the most extreme West. You left home. So Malcolm had a crude wake up, didn't he? Now, when knowing this real history, you can understand why Malcolm became a threat to people who couldn't buy him off because he knew, they knew in time that he was going to tell. And so they murdered him. And it wasn't just Europeans, so don't start thinking that, man, white man did to black man stuff. Don't even go into that BS. Europeans and Asiatics plotted and murdered Malcolm because they could not buy him off. Mm. Do you understand? That's what they're not telling you. Because in spite of everything, he maintained the integrity of the honor of helping to uplift his people. And so it was some people that was around him that really wasn't honorable. So keep that in mind. So the world already knows this. Are we clear? <laughs> so when you think that politicians, congressmen, people claim to be congressmen, senators, city council, so-called community leader guys don't know this, military and policemen, you think they don't know this? No, you're the only one that didn't know this. That's why you're here at the House of Reawakening Minds, to wake up. Comprehend? <laughs> so rather than try to convince we, you, we're showing you documentation. So you can't dispute it. Don't argue with me, argue with the documents. You understand? All right. Now again, for people who don't know the real history, even about the shell corporations, now you understand your connection and why you declare your nationality. Nationality means nativity. <coughs> Nativity means the relationship to your mother. The relationship to your mother means your honor and your heritability. Your inheritances. In honor, not your mothers and your fathers, you have no inheritance. That's what nationality is all about. That's why you must declare your nationality in order to be heritable. You'll never have what you call any estate unless you honor your mothers and your fathers. That rule applies to all humans on earth planet. And you're no different. So get over yourselves. Stop thinking that human beings are crayons. Grow up and be yourselves. But you can't be what you don't know. That's why you're giving this knowledge so that you can reconnect. Are we clear? So now you're reconnecting. All right? So in between, if there's any questions, etc., can someone pull a couple chairs up? So we're going to make sure that everybody got seats. Um, so that you can reconnect and understand that when you're dealing with other people that are claiming authority over you or claiming that you owe them anything, understand they're really trying to convert that debt on you that don't belong to you and never did. And this is why when people, you see people so-called trying to uh, capture a straw man, transmitting utility, uh, doing UCC financial statements, they're talking about this World Global Trust. That World Global Trust is based in that fraud of them converting falsely the debt of that corporation company that Lincoln bankrupted, it registered in France on you, the nationals of the land, and calling the national debt your debt when it's really that private corporation bankruptcy that Lincoln bankrupted in 1860. So when people are talking about the uh, contracts got out there, that's the contract. Now, what do you have to do with that? Nothing. Other than they bureaucratized peonage and slavery and said you agreed to it, and then accused your mother of selling her womb through the birth certificate, I mean, through the marriage certificate that was set up 
by the daughters of the American Revolution, which means that the eggs in your fallopian tubes belong to the Pope. That's what the marriage certificate actually is. It's a bank bond. And then after that collapse, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt backed it up with the eggs that hatched called birth certificates of shipping bottomry instruments, which are bank bonds since 1933. And that's what they backed you, that other United States corporation with since 1933, birth certificates, which are bank bonds. And tell these people this is registering the God of the beautiful birth of your child. <laughs> and it's really a shipping instrument. You don't understand these things and understand what I'm saying to you is not conjecture. It's the fact. And so when you keep going along with these things, thinking this stuff has anything to do with God, Jesus, and Allah, and registry of the divineness of the birth and marriage and stuff, no, they're curses. <coughs> and they're backed by your preachers who got secret oath to the Pope. So let's go to the congressional records. And Dr. Naila, so come back up here again. We're going to go to the congressional records to show these people the clergy's real oath that they think are submitting the people to Jesusness. We're submitting the people to Jesusness. And delivering souls and stuff. And sandwiches. Yeah,
join in offering their thanks to the Pope <coughs> for what he has already done for them and solicit his constant cooperation in their views of submitting the nations. So does P-O-P-E spell Jesus? No. no. Let's, let's repeat that because I might be making a mistake because I got <laughs> reading that song. Does P-O-P-E spell Jesus? No. Does it spell Yahushua? No. Does it spell God? No. All right, so now next line. So they're soliciting his constant cooperation in their views of submitting the nations. So are they submitting these nations and peoples to Jesus? No. Or are they submitting them to the Pope? Submitting them to the Pope. See why the world's in trouble? Mm -hmm. And what are the clergy doing? They're really ameliorating their own interests. Yes. They're serving themselves. Yes. And if you tell these people here that stuff without document, they start accusing you of having the devil. Yeah. They start accusing you of being anti-God anti and everything else, anti-Christ, and there's your anti-Christ themselves standing behind the pool. Okay. That's why I'm and they're funding them. They're funding them. They are funding them. And then their misery they accuse the devil of. You see the problem? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then they start acting all self-righteous and judgmental to people that don't buy into the game as if they're anti-God. So see why civilized people don't like black people? Because yes. they're not only in dishonor of their mothers and fathers, they're extreme hypocrites. Not ordinary hypocrites. They're extreme hypocrites. And the world already knows this. But they think the world don't see them for who they really are. Then they're always marching all around the place complaining with conditions that they themselves agree to. Mm -hmm. You don't make a pact with the demons. Because the clergy, they don't hide. It's called pulpit. Mm -hmm. Pulpit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a child can analyze that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Oh, there's congressional records. Here, just so, so they can find it. See, it's right there. See that, y'all? <laughs> so that's the congressman that you think representing you, don't you? Back to them same club members that have been converting the dead on you, been pretending to be government. Oh, it's also American diplomatic coup, 1778, 17, I mean 1884. And keep in mind, correlate time, timeline. Berlin Conference, 1884-1895. This is where the Constantinian nations came together, dividing up the Moorish Empire under the subdivisional designation of the Siberian dynasty called the Ottoman Empire. This is where they divided your state amongst the so-called Christian nations, and that's what they've been governing you ever since, kicking your keisters and telling you that the devil did it. And you, you've been following suit, telling your children that the devil is the source of your miseries. And you need to raise money so God can kick the devil's butt and you're really paying for your own enslavement. Mm. Meanwhile, Reverend's getting airplanes and everything at your expense, ameliorating their own interests and delivering you to the Pope under the secret treaty of Roma, which is an agreement under the Spanish Inquisition. But some people don't read, do they? But they're going to tell you about the Lord. It's the Lords of London who they're serving under the secret treaty of Rome. And that's when you see, that's when you see, uh, I'll show you, I'll show you a symbol for the Lords of London and the secret treaty of Rome. This is, this is a symbol I'll show you for in a minute. Hold on. Um, I think I have it in.
Fish and chip. Um, I just want to uh, use this uh, moment to show you. See that Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787? Modified only once. That's 1836. Constitution for the United States. Um, and here, and this is what Obama's talking about. You see, to all persons to whom these presents shall come, or be known, be known, whereas the United States of America in Congress, assembled by their commission, bearing date the 12th day of May, 1784, thought proper to constitute John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and Thomas Jefferson, their ministers, plenty potentiary, giving to them, or majority of them, full powers to confer, treat, and negotiate with the ambassador, minister, or commissioner of His Majesty, the Emperor of Morocco. See where your founding fathers really got their power from? And why they all got pheasants? So logically, people who want you to use the black brands aren't going to tell you this real history. So as you can see, they were ministered plenty potential, and this is where you get potentate in all your secret societies we get that title from. All them past masters and them brain masters are called potentates. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That's where its origin is. And so when they're talking about the so-called founding fathers, you can see that they're not the founding fathers. They were under the authority of Sidi Muhammad with the negotiations of the treaties. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, again, let's get back to the point. Let's go back to, uh, uh, say, the, uh, the Pope. Again, so that your concept would be correct. I want your concept to be correct. Um, And again, this is for the listeners. Um, if you want to um, have any more expanded information, like you, can do, you, you all who are listening can uh, see Dr. Naila. And I'll, also, we'll plan in the future maybe come on the show and answer some of these things again on your show. For those of you who know uh, Dr. Naila's show, can you announce your show, Dr. Naila? So they'll familiar, be familiar. That's Reawakening Minds that's on. Um High Frequency Radio Network every Monday night, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can go to www.highfrequencyradionetwork.com and hear it, or you can call in and listen to it at area code 424-222-5250. That's 424-222-5250. Um, and that's Mondays, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and um, as a matter of fact, let's let's um, let's do this too, because um, you have you have your your, your um, your high spot on, right? Um, I do, but I think I changed my password. <laughs> um, all right, let's see what let's see. it's on, but I think the password's changed. You need a high spot? I'm like I got to explain you. You got Xfinity? Mm -hmm. so your sister got Xfinity back here. If it's in here. You hear Taj? Six, come see it. She, she got Xfinity. Alright. Hot spot. You need a hot spot? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see if you can log on because I think I changed the password. Say it again? If you can see if you can log on. If, you, if it's not changed, then you'll automatically come on. Otherwise, I think I changed the password. Let me see what's up. Somebody was stealing my. <laughs> <laughs> it's picking it up, but apparently you. That's not mine. Password. That's not. I have one. That's not hers. That's, That's not mine. Was not yours. Sister, Sister, Sister Renee got, got one. I got one to that Wi Fi, that Xfinity Wi Fi that you can't connect to. What with your technical skills? You do it. It's technically speaking. <laughs> yes. 
You're thinking hard. I smell smoke. Whoa. <laughs> well, he just went to the hot spot so he can get off. You already own one. Why That's what I was about to ask that. Hmm? You already own one. Why do you need hot spots? Say again? You are already on mine. Why do you need hot spots? Just to let you all know why they're doing that, I have some um, constitutions over here um, um, for just a donation. I got about 50, 60 co copies, pocket size constitutions, um, just for a donation to House of Real Wicked and Mind. So you want to make sure you might want to give one before you, before you go. Yes. I also printed out a couple of worksheets from the RV Bay uh, website that are over there. Basic definitions and a couple of worksheets. Donations over there, dollars more. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> They're free. <laughs> Water. Go right over there on the table. Thank you. Let me take my time. That you're standing on Morocco. And that um, they don't know who the Moors are, you already know that they're BSing you. And when they don't mention it, you already know they're avoiding educating you because it's not in their political interest. All right? So, also, this is Obama speaking on the Moors, and he also mentioned the treaty, etc. So, when you think, again, now keep in mind, they, they've been telling you, but if you don't know the history, you don't know that you're being told. If you don't relate to yourself, you, it doesn't interest you. However, they've been telling you here and there on multiple levels of, about your estate. But again, your so-called leaders have been uh, in a state of so-called sob. Say so they will not emphasize these things. Now, with the Weekly World News, they're talking, they're talking stuff, but once you understand the real history, you will understand that a lot of things that the people take as um, abridgments are not really necessarily that. I can't pull this down, so I'll just go back on this. This one? Yeah, no, no, no. The, the word of the top. The top. Symbolic. 
but uh, also keep in mind um, when people pretend or don't give you this information, this is to show you that the world already knows. In case just because you didn't know doesn't mean that the world didn't know. Yeah. You're just not being taught. If you type George Washington in Cherry Tree, it'll probably, Say it again. It'll probably pop up if you type George Washington in Cherry Tree. Instead wait, of Morris Black. Instead of putting Morris Black Cherry Tree, yeah. put George Washington in Cherry Tree. Then they race Morris flag. In that story, then they say he got in trouble for chopping down the cherry tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. In that story, then they said he got in trouble for chopping down the cherry tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. His father, yeah, got mad at him. That's a symbol of him chopping down a Moorish flag. Right? Yeah, he said, "I cannot tell a lie and chop down the cherry." Oh, let me, let me. Um, my father's cherry tree. Yeah, it was something. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll put that. I'll put that. <coughs> stripes, which is the trading banner. Mm -hmm. And Banner. in peace, the, the, star, the stripes are really vertical. Mm -hmm. And then the canton is actually white with blue stars and still blue with white stars. Mm -hmm. That's the original. And so these three, three flags are supposed to be flown together for that stars and stripes to be legitimate. And when it's not shown with the true American flag, it's a fraud. Yeah. Of course, again, that's where you go back to the corporate entities and the shell corporations that we talked about at the beginning of the class. So if you know that history, you understand things that you see that you may assume that have nothing association with you, it has everything to do with you. You understand? So this, we, what's going on here, is what no Drali is correcting. That's what the movement is all about. So if you don't know this history, you don't, you be thinking he's trying to make somebody believe something and he's really telling you about your lost estate. You understand? And those who aren't interested in you knowing this logically don't want you to know this information because it means that the United States Corporation Company is over. You get the point? And again, this is what the uh, Chinese and the Russians are telling them, no more, no more shells. And that's these bottles up there representing the Shell Corporations since 1860, 61, and the theft of your birthright. All right? Mm -hmm. So uh, by knowing this information, when you're talking to magistrates who are faking as judges and everything, you understand why you never called them a judge. You call them, you know, uh, they're administrative clerks, actually. Now here, this is George Washington's family crest because he converted our estates into the states and that's why it's used at the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. First star, the Vatican. Second star, District of London. Third star, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. All sovereign city-states, the, tr the trinity, the real trinity of colonial European operations 
in the Maghrib, which is Morocco, the most extreme west, colonial operations. That's the basis of your mistreatment. So if you're sitting around talking about colors and racism, as you can see, your concepts and your conversation is incorrect. All right, are we clear? Mm -hmm. That's the theft of your birthright. So when they see, the, when our people see this up on 18th Street in Philadelphia, near that church, etc., mm -hmm. they see that in Washington, District <coughs> of Columbia. Most of the people, by not knowing this history, don't know what they're looking at. You understand? And this is why George Washington, see that? George Washington, that's his family crest. That's why he's claimed as the preacher who converted our estates into the states. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Theft of your birthright. So I'm also saying uh, uh, to you, showing you that, uh, again, with a little research, this stuff is not is not unknowable. It's just that our people ain't, aren't educated, and this is also why they use an obelisk as his monument. You see, that's that's African, and what they've conquered. And then, of course, you understand the King Alfred, which says these people are bound to the continent by heritage. And of course, the black teachers teach you that you brought here on sardine ships, stacked like sardines, <laughs> in olive oil and stuff. <laughs> with chains and stuff. With diapers and stuff. So again, um, again, like I'm saying to you, and which you already know, this stuff is no secret. It's, it's no secret. So the major issue is, if you're not connected mentally, logically, you're not connected by right of claim, because you would be declared an incompetent heir, mm -hmm. and thus a ward of the state. And this is where they've been as cheating your rights, your property, mm -hmm. etc. Now, <clears throat> let's uh, look at this. Watch this. Um, It's still drawing, so it's got a lot of stuff.
have to talk so they know we're not and make it the sounds off. We're in silence in here. Oh, yeah, well, so, sorry for that. But anyway, because it's taking a long time to pull it in, but it may be blocking because we're teaching. Yeah. yeah. But um, the real deal, for those who research, you when you look at the satire um, in the newspapers, when Abraham Lincoln was running for president, they would they have him in here is Abraham Lincoln dressed in Lori Star. And this is one of the original pictures that they and they doctor it up. But again, you can look at uh, some of this stuff, look it up for yourself, you know, so the stuff is dragging. But look, look for some of this stuff yourself and you'll find it, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's like anything else. Um, if you don't know this and it's never brought to your attention, you don't, you don't seek to know it. Now this is the genetic, this is the genetic uh, uh, stuff done on, done on Lincoln's genes. Dr. Alan Holsworth, an anthropologist, stated that he and his team managed to obtain DNA evidence from a lock of Abraham Lincoln's hair, which proves that he had a very strong African genetic link. His chromosome makeup is very specific to West Africa. Of course, you already know West Africa. You know West Africa is more. But. DNA patterns and it suggests that Abraham's real father was indeed an Af of African origin. But that's, scholars already know that. But what I was trying to do, uh, actually show you is I wanted you to see this. And this was in the newspapers during the time that he was running for the premiership, or the, what you call the presidency. And so you see he has a plant, plant, plant loom, the Moorish scimitar, and all uh, the etc. Now this is during this period. So when you understand the real history, you understand why you're not getting this in history books. Because they want to disconnect you from the estate and the land. Are we clear? And there is another picture of A un unfiltered. Because almost all of the pictures that they have, or that they show in the history books. And this is where they, they name, nicknamed him um, Abraham Africanus I in the Moorish Bar. And this is their mockery of him doing the um, Emancipation Proclamation because they would have to give all the land back. That's why they won't give you the history on the 36, 30 parallel, 40 acres and a mule, etc. the closing of the Freedman's Bureau, the creation of person to the corporation, and the conversion of the corporate debt on the true nationals of the land. That's where you get your national debt. That's that fake debt that they've been talking about that you don't owe anything. And this is back to what the Pope is talking about. Let's get out of this, because you, you can look at some of this stuff yourself. I'm just giving you reference points to let you know that, you know, this is in the Library of Congress, too. So when you think that this information is not readily available, it absolutely is just not shown to you. Because you're told by your so-called black leaders that you're black in order to disconnect you from your history and thus your estate. You get the point? It's called the great sellout. Universal. And the great Masonic secret. Of course, this is Dred Scott. And of course, when he talked to you in history and any and, and, and of those who, who go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, You'll see the statues, but of course they're statues 
and you'll see the, the turbans and the fences, etc. And they'll tell the people who don't know the history, oh, they're Frenchmen, and they believe them. <laughs> So, um, so we also want to deal with, well, and you also want to do research here because this is where your heart's really, where the Go West young man come from. Heart's really the New York newspaper tycoon and this is uh, represented in the Mummers Creek in Philadelphia and the Wigmore party is where the Europeans will wear wigs, curly wigs that look like the Moors and they still do that in, in different British controlled territories for jurisprudence. So now when the Wigmore party split um, and that's the foundation of the what you know as the Republican Party and this 1854 is when they started calling themselves white people. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. The Wigamore Party. When the Wigamore Party split and they set up the, what's known as the Republican Party, the members of the Republican Party in their meetings and their conventions in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, took on the noble title of white people which did not apply to them prior to 1854, because it belongs to you. It's a legal status, it's not a complexion. It's Islam, and that's also, 1854 is the, is the year, 1854 is the year that Philip, the city of Philadelphia was incorporated. Yep. Yes, that's, is that, and then again, Dr. Nayo, go ahead. Islam, and that's also um, depicted in the movie Trading Places, which- Yes, is Trading the, Places with, uh, uh, yes. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. <coughs> yes, and that's why, stock market is used as a symbol because the stock was back on use since 1861. So they really tell, and then and symbolizing the story, where he's on, he's like, um, he has no foundation, no legs, but he really does. No standing, trading places, but the real deal is, it's really the truth. You know, so they talk to you all the time. And it's also why in the Matrix, um, the one who holds the, the pill, the red pill, blue pill, is more fierce. <laughs> you know? So they're, they're telling you in multiple ways. But again, I mean, none of this stuff is really, it's really, it's really secretive. But this is how, yes. this is how they hit the truth right in our face. In your face, yes. Um, so, so, they, so you can't accuse them in the future of not telling you. They just, all they can say, well, you know, we called, you followed. I mean, you had to follow. So take responsibility. You know, and also, um, they can say, well, it's not our fault that y'all won't read. You know, stuff like that. It's not our fault that your black leaders keep selling you into slavery. Um, let me see what else I wanted to show you. What's some else I wanted to show you? Civil orders. Can you do C civil orders June oh. 10th? All right. Um, so, again, now this is the Pope's letter to Obama. Right now, this is the Act of Congress 1871. You already know that. We've been through that. So let's go to this letter from the Pope Francis to Obama, his employee. That's his employee. People who don't know history think that the presidency is a separate entity altogether. He's the Pope's employee. Because it's a corporation, not a country. That's, that's what you must understand. So let's, let's go. It's not, it's not, it's not. But the time, it's also proven there's no separation between church and state. Of course it isn't, because it, the, the state belongs to the church. That's the point. <laughs> and, and the other point is, is that that's not unknown. That's the major issue, is that it's not unknown. And for people to promote that false paradigm, they're only doing it with people who they know can't read or don't read 
that don't deal with facts. Because remember, most so-called black people do not deal with math. They do not deal with facts. They do not deal with laws of nature. They deal with beliefs only, and they change every couple of years, according to what Reverend says. Mm -hmm. And they find a new guy every couple of years. I didn't know God yesterday, but I found him today. <laughs> Did you give the body back and bring it back? Oh, no, I kept that, but the new Lord, you know. Oh, please. And it continues. And it, it, it's so hypocritical, but nobody ever pulled calls us on it, so we get away with it. But the civilized world knows that we hit the Don't be getting away with it anymore. Yeah, in danger. The only thing you got to worry about is is so-called Negroes being out of a job three months because mm -hmm. guaranteed they're going to join the service, go mm -hmm. in the army, and go kill some women and children in some other country that never did nothing to them to keep this man in power. They come back and do some nigger marching group because they didn't get no rewards or badges. <laughs> that was so real. Everybody knows that that's what they do. That is so real. They wonder why nobody likes so-called black people because they can't be trusted because they're traitors. Of course, we're not supposed to say that, are we? Because it's like honest, right? <laughs> 30 more. So now, <clears throat> Pope Francis to Obama, right? Now, and, and this is also for people who pretend they don't know this, right? So, it's issued to all members of the domestic police forces, U.S. Marshal Service, the Provost Marshal, members of the American Bar Association, and the American Armed Services. So all these people already know this, this is direct, because they're all members of the Roman Curia. So the Pope himself, who's the Don, is instructing them. So when they pretend they don't know this, again, you already know they're BS. Right? All right. So let's go down some, oh, Dr. Knight. One other thing, Islam, uh, just as you know, another symbol, when the Pope was here, he rode around in the fiat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's symbolic. Yeah. Now, let's look at this. Yes. We're not going to go this whole thing, but let's go, let's go through here. Now, let's go down a few paragraphs. Now, in your own time, you can read this. So, keep this in mind, the history that we're telling with these shell corporations. All right? Notice here, um, all parties must be brought to understand the nature of the federal government, the limitations of its authority, and their own obligation to act in favor of the organic states of the Union. The Grand Army of the Republic shall continue to operate under General Order 100, known as the Libra Code, extent from the pen of the last Republic President Abraham Lincoln. So he's exposing you to real history. That was the last lawful president. So all these people getting all these degrees in colleges and everything don't even know that you haven't had a lawful president since they Lincoln, right? But they're going to tell you about history. So the Pope himself got to tell you the history because he knows that his minions, so-called black leaders, have been paid off to help fraud you, and nobody wants to admit that they've been lying. So the Pope's telling them. And he owns them, so they can't deny it anymore. Are we clear? So, now look right here. No orders, executive or otherwise, issued by Barack H. Obama pretending authority on the land of the American states while operating as the President of the United States Corporation, that's one of those shells you see on the table, mm -hmm. nor as President of the United States of America, minor, it's another one of those shells, mm -hmm. or owed any performance by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Ham, or any ordinary. All plainly stated grants of contractual authority evident in the Constitution for the United States of America. Now that's small U, now that's the organic United States, the one that's covered up. All right. Remain in place subject to good faith performance of the accompanying obligations and treaties. So you can see the treaties is what they've been avoiding. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Paul. But for those that's watching, how come the Pope Exposed his information of the people that was prior to him helped start it. No. The, po the post before him. I, I got confused. Explain again. I think I'm what saying. Like, how come the Pope is exposing this when the post previous to him was helping keep this world going? Well, that's why they unseated him. You got to remember what's happening today. And the Manchurians dumping their bonds 
and told them no more shells. Remember, they've been in, it's been an intervention. See, people need to understand there has been an intervention. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of the intervention, you're assuming because they've been ruling for the last couple hundred years that there's no power to counter them. They have been intervened by the Manchurian Masons, in including some of the P2 Masons of the Vatican in support of the Pope. In other words, they got rebellion in the ranks. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what this motu proprio was all about in 2013. And that's what this is, a backup, because they are in breach. So this Pope is telling you the real history. Because the heat is on them, too. You understand that's where all these bankers are so happy with their profits that they keep doing stuff to themselves and stop breathing? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're so elated with their prosperity. All right, now, so look here. So he's telling you again the real history. Now, think the corporate entities that I just showed you to understand what the Pope is talking about. See, because he's giving you the history, but if you don't know the history, this can go over your head. Although he's telling you directly. It's not even coded. He's telling you directly. Mr. Obama is the quote-unquote president of a governmental services corporation. What is he talking about? The Shell Corporation registered in Puerto Rico. The people who don't know how to read or don't understand government think the United States is this land here. Because they can't read because they have the mentality of boys and girls. They're designated as minorities. They're just adults with diapers on. Do you understand? They think it means Afrocentric numbers. It's legal status. All right, so Mr. Obama is the quote unquote president of a governmental services corporation under contract to provide stipulated services to the organic states. Now you understand the contract original with the United States Corporation Company that Benjamin Franklin registered in France, 1754, that is now being used to cover up the real government to convert their private debt on you, the descendants of the Moors who think they're black. Do you understand the problem? So this is not, you've got to know the history in order to understand why you must nationalize. Because if you're not in your, the bloodline of your mothers and fathers, you have no claim on the state. That's right. This is the reason why the European took your name, your nationality, and your religion. Mm -hmm. to, to disinherit you and get you to agree to it. Now they're not, they're not obligated. Because mm -hmm. you agree to be wars. Mm -hmm. Now ignorance of the law is no excuse either. No excuse. You understand? So as you can see this, Mr. Obama is the president of a governmental services corporation under contract to provide stipulated services to the organic states and is on their payroll. He otherwise acts as a foreign dignitary representing the United States of America, minor. So now you've got another one of these shells up here. You've got to know what you're reading, you see. In neither of these capacities is he allowed any granted authority to impose upon American state citizens endanger American state property or command mercenary forces on American state soil, however veiled as federal civilian service agencies. We remain, we require, pardon me, the Joint Chiefs of Staff and General Hand to commence measures to disarm federal civilian agency personnel and to seize control of the vast stockpiles of arms which have been improperly amassed by the Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, and other agencies employed by the United States. And you see all capital letters. That's another one of those shells. Now, see, someone doesn't know the history. They hear the word or the phrase United States, and they think that he's talking about the same entity. And you can see there's three different versions in that one paragraph. Wow. Now, The only federal agency allowed free egress on the land of American states is the U.S. Marshal Service. And then only when their personnel are engaged in their duty to protect the U.S. mail and sworn to act as constitutional officers. That's the only time they're officers. If you call them officer under any other circumstance, you just give them your birthright. This is, again, why 
Um, so-called scholars under the John D. Rockefeller operations do not teach you constitutional principles to get you to, to encourage you to call these people officers when they're really not, and you've just assigned them the authority that they do not have. Do you understand? So if you don't know this history, you have a tendency to be groomed into the black codes and speak what they call hood English, which is actually designed to enslave you, and you think it's some kind of cool, um, hood type, connotative language that we make up and is really social engineering. Because culture is in the language. Now, let's go down a couple paragraphs. Now, you often read this in your own spare time, but let's go down to a couple more paragraphs. Um, anyway, such foreign officials include members of the American Bar, American and British Bar Associations who are licensed to act as privateers against the interests of the American states and the American state citizens from 1845 to 2013 and flagrant breach of trust. All such licenses are now extinguished. So you can see the, the, the Pope has extinguished all their licenses. So what happens when you go deal with these people and you thought they was representing you, they was actually screwing you. So now the Pope got to tell you because you didn't believe it. Do you understand? So if you don't know your rights, logically, you don't exercise them and then you're declared incompetent. Then you'll get a lawyer and he's actually screwing you. No attorney. See the problem? Yes. All right. So now let's let's go down the last couple paragraphs. Oh, let's look at this paragraph too. Now this is the the real operatives of these people that you that you out of ignorance would call your congressman and your senators type of stuff. So the Pope's fooling you since you won't deal with reality. So the Pope's telling, because he owns them. This is the Roman Curia. No enforcement upon any American state or American state citizen is only a result of any act of any Congress. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Any act of any Congress operating as the sovereign government of the United States of America minor. Now in the state of Clearfield Doctrine? Yep. Acting. Nor as the board of directors or board of trustees of any incorporated entity whatsoever, because that's who they really are. They're board of trustees and board of directors for the United States Corporation Company, not the country. Because the United States is a country. You <laughs> see? Do you understand? All right, so all these estates, small case, and the states, uppercase, erroneously believed to represent the American states and American state citizens, and which were conveyed by fraud and legal deceit to the United States of America minor, shall, and more recently to the city state of the United Nations are revenued without exception to the geographically defined American states and the American state citizens. So who is he talking about? The true Americans, the people on the land, distinguished from the corporate entities. <coughs> Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Geographically defined American states and American state citizens, where they shall remain in perpetuity as assets belonging to the what? Rightful and lawful beneficiaries. You see, that's what Raleigh's argument is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are we clear? A lot of people need to understand that there is a big difference between lawful and legal. Mm. Yes, legal process, lawful is the letter of the law. They are not the same. Exactly. Now, so all legal fiction entities, however structured and named after American states and American state citizens, are returned to them in their control, free and clear of any debt, promise, encumbrance, or obligation. So do you have to be going to authenticate some birth certificate or file some UCC lien and... <laughs> Uh, 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 it's um, no, no, it's track. No, it's track. No, it's track. number. No, track. Great. Um, th this one is from June, um, uh, June twelfth, but it's still part of the letter. Go ahead. And what it says is, a prompt correction is available from the organic um, states by proclamation. So if you proclaim your nationality, isn't that what drew all the attention to people? If they don't do anything, proclaim their nationality. Yes, and then, and then this says we are we're entitled to uh, five hundred million dollars in one thing, U.S. and and uh, 
80 times something else. There's something else in here that, you know, uh, gives us remedy, you know. Yes. A greater remedy. In other words, they're all obligated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you, we, are not supposed to be jumping through some hoops to get it. No. And he provides for the uh, posse uh, commutatus too, you know. He, 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 he yes. For that too. Make sure you, you send that in the mic. Oh, uh, he allows for the possible comatitis, you know. So uh, they're going to. Oh, the possible comatitis is to be observed and enforced on the land of the domestic organic state, regardless of any executive order to the contrary issued by Barack H. Obama acting as quote unquote president of the United States of America or as the president of any incorporated entity uh, whatsoever. Any such um, imposition, yeah, imposition of um, martial law by Mr. Obama has exactly the same legal standing as martial law imposed by the president of Burger King uh, International <laughs> or the King of Sweden on the land of the organic states. He can order um, his, his paid employees to commit Harry Carey if he wishes to do so and, and they may follow his instructions uh, if they care to, but they may not under any circumstances under uh, murder anyone, assault anyone, seize any private property, or cause any trouble for American state citizens, or, or, or they shall be immediately <coughs> recognized as criminals and be treated as such. Well, all right. Now that's the Pope telling you. Now, let's look at this. Let's go down here, and we're going to... What date was that? This, 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 is, this is civil orders. That's the 10th. The, the, the June 10th. For, the, for this one. Okay. Now, let's go down to the bottom here. Um, so that you will that you'll understand the directive. We know that the current circumstance, that's all this crap that you're dealing with, all this problem that you're dealing with, economics, political, etc. We know that the current circumstance is in part the result of criminal acts engaged in 150 years ago, which resulted in the commercial enslavement of who? African. Of who? African Americans. Oh, y'all can't read or something. <laughs> of who? African Americans. African -Americans. Who were summarily claimed as chattels back in U.S. government debt in wake of the Civil War. Now you understand this history, y'all? Yeah. And the shell corporations. Mm -hmm. Despite every act of abolition and declaration of prohibition against both peonage and slavery, it has been the policy of the U.S. government to enslave its citizens and to operate as a rogue state among the nations of the world. Yes. Instead of freeing African Americans, the sum total result of the Civil War was to vastly expand public sector ownership of slaves, giving rise to the outrageous and improper claims that have been made against the American states and American state citizens that we are dealing with today. It is uniquely fitting that the Grand Army of the Republic is recalled to settle this circumstance in favor of the people Attachment, Civil Orders, Anna Maria, Wilhelmina, Hanna Sophia, Ritzinger, Von Ritzenstein, Von Leto, Verbeck, Private Attorney in Service to His Holiness, Pope Francis, documents related. The United States isn't a country, it's a corporation. The hidden, hidden Vatican Crown Empire. So the Pope is telling you the history because your so called paid off black leaders ain't going to tell you because they don't want to be found out that they've been selling you out all these years. See what Malcolm found out? That's the real reason they murdered Malcolm. Because so he found that all the ministers around him had nationality cards, and that was a breakup from the Moorish Science Temple with the great sellout under Cal Calvin Coolidge and J. Edgar Hoover. That's why nobody talks about that era. They'll mention it without giving you details. So now the Pope's telling you. So you don't have to be trying to figure out anything. Now you know your real history. Are we clear? And do you need to jump through some hoops to reclaim your lost estate? Or the Pope telling you it's returned to you? With no debt, no encumbrance, etc. And remedy, too. 
Say it again. And remedy too. And remedy too. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the remedy, any state citizen who is forced to open fire on federally or federal state or uh, uh, correct state, in quotes, or capital, all states, um, funded personnel in defense of property or life will be recognized as a non-combatant civ civilian without exception, um, held, har held harmless and support supported by all members of the American Armed Forces of the United States, all caps of America, and all American state militia. Any state citizen in so imposed upon by those in his or her employment <coughs> or hired by those in his or her employment in any capacity whatsoever including elected, quote unquote, officials, will be entitled to full reparations in the amount of, I think that's five million US dollars, or the equivalent, or time of damage incurred for every death, two million five hundred thousand, or the equivalent mm -hmm. at the time of the uh, damage for every permanent disability, they show also be owed full reparations for all property damage incurred and up to 80 times comp compensatory damages at the dis uh, discretion of a jury of their peers. All right, now, and this is where, when you, when you look at the combined constitutional bylaw, where the grand sheets and assistant grand sheets are putting power to make law, this is what they're supposed to be doing when uh, Drew Ali said, he said, if you don't believe that the program that I have for the redemption, the salvation of my people and citizens are correct, go to those who know law. And of course the great sellout is that they have not been enforcing the law. And so the Europeans have been having free reign on us. And so the Pope is coming out and telling you. So now you don't have to doubt it. Because the Pope himself, who is the Don and the owner of all corporate entities on Earth planet, is now backing up Noah Drali 150%. So you can't fake it anymore. So now the Europeans start killing you out, you want to keep on being black, that's on you. But you can't say that you weren't told, and you can't say that it wasn't given to you. Although you still have people who are trying to hide this information. And so you're here at the House of Reawakening Minds to get some information to start liberating you mentally because you cannot be liberated economically and socially and politically until you're mentally liberated. You know, so we're not trying to convince you of anything. We're giving you the documents. Do with it what you please, but you can't say that you weren't told. And as these Europeans start liquidating everybody's estate and start killing these people off, you don't have to be in line. And when they got these club things going on in the street, you ain't supposed to be there. Do you understand? You're supposed to be here in the house of reawakening minds, learning and reclaiming your lost estate, showing yourself competent. Because you're, in other words, like we sitting here, we're talking, you're not supposed to, not that you shouldn't ask questions, but by now you should be answering these questions yourself. Because you're capable of teaching others. But understand this, the world already knows this. You've been behind your responsibility of honoring your mothers and fathers, which is why you lost your estate in the first place. Are we clear? Clear. But again, we're showing you these documents so that you can't pretend or keep on deluding yourself like nobody knows this just because they don't discuss this with you. They don't discuss it with you because if they start discussing with you, Susie may not be going, going to college at your, at your expense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On your trust that you didn't know. Was yours. That, exactly. <laughs> and this is what it's basically partially all about. Dr. Naila? It's not, someone is asking what document uh, Sister Delilah was reading from. This, this is the letter, Some this words. particular one, both of these are letters from Pope Francis to the United States Corporation Company, to President Obama, to the Congress, to the Senate, to the field marshals, to the police department, 
to all heads of government, including the military and the Bar Association, from Pope Francis, who is the head of the Roman Curia, of which all corporate states are members of the Roman Curia, i.e. they're in his employees. And whereas the people have been taught falsely by their fake black leaders that there was a separation of church and state, know that them so-called black leaders secretly have a 501c3 skull and bones kickback agreement, and they've been helping perpetrate this lie against their own people. And so the Pope was now telling you that there is no separation of church and state because they belong to him, and he's telling them to stand down and stop the BS. That's the letter from Pope Francis to Barack Obama, H. Obama, it's head of the United States Corporation Company doing business at Morocco, which is the land it's under occupation of all players. Can you say it? It's dated June 10th, 2014. Okay. It's not the same civil order as July 4th, where they're talking about the corporations no longer, or the government being a mere corporation. It's from June 10th, which is about a month before. And remember, that's available to anybody that reads. All you got to do is go on the internet. Yeah, on, go to the right. internet. You pull yeah. that up. Yeah. yeah. And all your politicians have this. They had it before you even see it. Because it's directed to them. Civil yeah. orders. Yeah. June 10th. June 10th. It just here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see it? Yes, please. Islam. Uh, Islam. He, he, he pretty yeah. much said. So it. this one was prior to the July. Yes, the to July, the July, July 4th. 14th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was June 10th. And so also, what? remember the Motu Proprio of uh, 2013, too. Mm -hmm. So they need to read all of these things to see mm -hmm. that what they have is a uh, rebellion in the ranks. Mm -hmm. And this is why you have the fort, their letter from the 14th. And he's, he, he, he extinguished all the licenses of all the lawyers and attorneys in North America and in England. Because mm -hmm. he owns them both. Mm -hmm. so he, he pretty much, uh, you know, in, in employment terms, he fired Obama. He, he, he said that. Obama? So he's the last, he was the last fraudulent. What the last CEO of that corporation. Exactly. So Trump don't even matter. Don't get caught up in that stuff that just happened. Now, once you understand, once you understand that, you understand that the dog and pony show that was demonstrated just this past week <laughs> right, is exactly that. It's to keep the people busy so you don't have crazy stuff going on in the street. With all due respect to Mr. Trump, he's not president of anything. He's president of the acting program that's going on right now while transitions are being made in the background. It is. All clear? It is. Clear. It is. Um, and um, while people are arguing about you know, Hillary and Trump, they don't know that they're both controlled by the judges. And it doesn't make them good people or bad people. It just makes that the fact. Now, the deal of it is being the proper heirs, which Drowley told you 102 years ago, and now the Pope is telling you, mm -hmm. now, uh, your job is to start acting like you know, and stop playing these stupid belief games and start getting you the facts. And the Pope is dealing with the cabal, and the P2 Masons, and the Manchurians, with the support of Russia, and other Asiatic nations are dealing with the, the bonds that's been on your back since the Civil War. And it ain't a chain, it's no bonds at 54, 55 Water Street that's back in the United States Corporation debt that you thought was yours. And that's the source of your poverty and our abuses. With the help of the black leader guys keeping you asleep. We tell you they know Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, and Muhammad while raping their own people with a 501c3 skull and bones agreement. And now that people are starting waking up, they say, well, now, well, uh, 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 now they got a 501c4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same beast. <laughs> you know, but uh, again, uh, we've gone over this in this last six months redundantly. 
because it's recognized.